Father, Lord, we thank you. We pray that you breathe upon your word. That you do mighty things and glorious things in our life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Please let me sit there. Turn to your left and right and celebrate your neighbor. So you're welcome to his presence. I celebrate every one of you one more time. Today is our 13 years anniversary Thanksgiving. In the first service, I share about the volume, the value for the prophetic mantles. And our archive scripture was taken in the book of Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. It said, by the prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by the prophet was preserved. Uh, I share this to you because I was actually struggling with it in the, when the Lord wanted me to share the message. I look at it, we have a message for the people today which are thanksgiving. And um, many people in life, especially in our world today, have zero value for the prophetic graces and mantle God has given to them and the struggle. Just like the way many children want to do things on their own, um, not following father's instruction. Because if you want to go far in life, the Bible says, honor the father and the mother. That means honoring parents prolong your days. It says so that the day may be long. So I think one condition to live long is to honor your parent both biological parent and spiritual parent. And we can see in this generation is more or less zero. That children feel they've arrived, their father or their mother is nothing. Like I always tell us, no matter how rich you, your father is, you must not stop to bless your father. Oh, what will I give my father will matter? Oh, no. It's not the gift, it's the heart and the response, the blessings of the father. In fact, your father, one of you must know, your father not to be a pastor for, for him to bless you. The Bible says the lesser shall bless. The lesser, which is lesser gods, which is father or mother. He have the power to bless. He had the power to curse. Your father has been empowered to curse and empower to bless. Depending on the area you fall, if you fall in blessings, the blessing work. In curses, the curses work. You want to wonder why? The truth is that no matter how born again, how redeemed you are, without the blessings of the Father, the growth is limited. So I share with you what the place of your prophet or your father in your life. The prophet is the key to the termination of captivity. And I also share in the first service, the prophet is the key to safety and security. But I will move to the service today. Uh, I, uh, I conclude by what to do to benefit from the ministry of the prophet is place a value on your prophet. Submit to instruction. Submit to instruction. Praise God. Submit to instruction. Serve the mantle. Today, I want to share in this second service. I will share what I tie to. Amen. I share this, a season of celebration. A season of celebration. Like I said, everybody will be here with us. I think the AC is coming up gradually now. And um, God, God, by this time, next will be that our by the grace of Hey, by the grace of God. Job here wherever you find yourself. If there's any empty seat around you, just let us know because so that people can occupy it. It's a season of celebration. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. I want you to listen because it's going to be a very brief message. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them, and they shall not be diminished. 
I will multiply them and they will not be diminished. And we also glorify them and they shall not be small. That is mean thanksgiving have a way of establish us. Thanksgiving have a way of multiplying us. And before you raise Lazarus, you say, Lord, I thank you because I know thou answerest me. So what are we celebrating today at City of Liberty International Church? Number one, the privilege of the call of God. The privilege of call of God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4, and no man take this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. While giving thanks to God, there is a call, there is a church. That for 13 years, God has been so faithful, and many testimony, many lives have been liberated through this call. We had a testimony in the first service shared by our sister. But through this testimony, I got married. I explained financial breakthrough. Through, I mean, through this commission, through the call, I experienced another realm. I have change of names for Miss to Mrs. and to Pastor. I don't know if you hear that testimony. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 9, verse 6. And he said to him, Look now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is a honorable man. All that he says surely come to pass. So let us go there, and perhaps they, they can show us the way that we should go. That may through the call, many God have given people ways, direct their path, give them focus, either via the preaching. Or they are the prophetic declaration. What we talked about, the privilege of call of God, what I, it translates into the honor of the call. You can relate this to what I shared with you in the first service, where we value, where we honor a man of God, where we honor mankind, where we value people for who they are. It don't need to be a rich man for you to value him. Just value because he's God creator. Praise God. Number two, the faithfulness of God. What are we celebrating today as a church? We are celebrating the faithfulness of God. That God has been so faithful. The Bible says in the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24, And no man take this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was called, like I share. So we are celebrating the faithfulness of God because God has been so faithful for the past 13 years. God is faithful. God is the color of men. The color of men the color is the dwells. The color is the... When we talk about the color, which is God Almighty, is the dwarf of everything we see. The miracle, the healing, the deliverance, the transformation, the impact, the fruitfulness is the color that empowers us. Because without the color, we can do nothing. Nothing ever happened here by the strength of man. It happened by the color. The ministry is nothing but the celebration of the faithfulness of the doer of all things, which is God. It is the celebration of the commitment of the creator and his purpose over this commission. Number three, what are we celebrating today? We are celebrating the help of God. The help of God. How God has helped us. And how God has helped you in life. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 11. And the men of Israel went out to Mizpah and pursued the Philippines and drove them back as far as below Batka. 
And the summer took the stone and set it upon the between Mizpah and Shil and called his name Ebenezer, saying, Thou far the Lord has helped us. In our career, in our business, in all, God has helped us. It's not by our strength, because there are people who are more stronger, more knowledgeable, better, intelligent. They are no more. But God help you, and God help us. Even the church who started, they are nowhere to be found. I served in Redeemed Christian Church of God for 16 years as a pastor. 16 years in Redeemed Christian Church of God. I was led, a pastor sold the church. I was the one they asked to go and start the church. He, the pastor sold the church, sold the instruments without letting the member know and travel abroad. Praise God. He sold everything. So when I was asked to go and take over the church and I resumed the church, and uh, we, that we're going to do let's go and fishing, but I, I should go ahead and mobilize the people. And the people see, I said, ah, This is now redeemed church. I said, No, our pastor, they started calling pastor. Pastor Lai was not going. I said, I've got to resume here as a new pastor. <laughs> Praise God. You can see how funny it is. But today, where the pastor is nowhere to be found in America. There's nowhere to be found. But God has been so faithful. We are so grateful to God. The helpfulness or the mercifulness of God is superior to the powerfulness of men. No matter how powerful a man is, the help of God is superior to the power of man. Even the most powerful man on earth need help. Even president need help. Governor need help. Because no man can achieve anything by strength or by himself. Or that you call it cabinet, you call it special, as sister special, this, all of that is part of the help to help the governor or the president or the CEO to become what you want to become in life. So you discover we all need each other. But in this case, the help of God is superior to the help of man. Number four, we are celebrating the grace of God. We are celebrating his faithfulness we are celebrating the grace of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10, it says, but the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain, but I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Paul is saying this with all his strength, with all that I know, it is grace of God. It's not by my power. He said, because of that grace, I labor more, I ship more, I experience more, more favor, more grace by the grace of God. I prophesy today that the grace of God will be available for every one of us here in the name of Jesus. The grace of God is the secret of ease. When the grace of God upon your life, things will become so easy. The grace of God is also the secret of speed in life. When grace comes, you enjoy supernatural speed. What take others years just take you a few days by the grace of God. And I pray for us today that grace will be available for us in Jesus' name. The grace of God is also the release of gift. When the grace of God comes upon you, gifts will be released. Like I always share with us here, nothing we are going to do here that anybody will say I'm under pressure. Many a time I come, I say, God, you, if truly you call me, I need to show things. I remember when we want to start the building, somebody said, uh, let's organize lunch. So we invite people, they'll come and lunch. I said, no, we are not going to lunch for God. It's his work. He should build it by himself. And we pray. The day we made our mind that we are going to lay the foundation of the church, there was no money at all. But the date was fixed. And I said, it's going to be June, uh, 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 sorry, July 7th. I said, that's the day. It's going to be 7th, 7th. Something must happen. 
And I took the little money we have in the church. We emptied it. We gave it out. That day, the foundation is going to lay on Sunday, 7th. By Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there was no money. No one error. The only thing they do, they dig it down. And the engineer said they need money to peg it. No money for the peg. And miraculously, I received a call on Friday. I built Friday or Saturday. As I said, Lando, I want to lay foundation. I said, yes. One of us is in the auditorium today by the special grace of God. And a seed of over five million was sent that day. Without information, nothing. Miraculously, the money come and the foundation was laid. Every stage of life, we just say, God, we want to do this. One day I was talking to the engineer. I said, engineer, you told us if we buy everything, if we have six million, we can start. Now, every day we are spending money. What you told us, your calculation has failed now. <laughs> he said, my calculation has not failed. It's the economic that increases. <laughs> it's the economic that have issue. That those things I calculate for you, and then that a bag of cement was about 5,000 or something. Now look at the amount. He said, it's not me. My calculation is still working. But what I'm trying to tell you, the grace of God make it life ease for us. Number five, the goodness of God. We are celebrating the goodness of God that God is so kind and so good to us. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 84, verse 11. Um, okay, let me take Psalm 27, verse 13. I wouldn't have lost heart unless I have believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. What that means? He's saying, I will have given up in life. I will have given up for life, but the goodness of God, that God is so kind and is so faithful that he will perfect everything. God is the reason for the good and the devil is the reason for the evil. Number six, the power and the glory of the Lord. We are celebrating the power and the glory of the Lord. The Bible says, Early will I seek thee. In verse 2 of that Psalm 63 verse 1. He said, I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. I will tell you, there is a glory of God. It is the goodness of God. It is the power of God that kept us here. Like I shared in the second service, I was talking to one of our, our daughter. I was just sharing something that I said. I was talking to somebody. He said, people are telling me, I, I used to go to that church. Why used to go to that church? Stop that church and come. And I said, and I asked the person, I responded to the person. The person that is telling you you should leave, stop here and come. Is it the founder of that church? Is it the first person that started the church? Is, the people... Who started the church? Probably they are not over there again. They've left. What you thought is the best is the worst for some people. And I said, the only thing that focus on God, not what might tell you that matter, is what God said that matter. Power and glory is what I have experienced in this past 13 years. We have experienced the power of God. We have experienced the glory of God. We have experienced the supernatural move of God. We spread God in different way. Every single service is an experience of the power and the glory of God in this church. I remember one Sunday I said, we are going to feed anyone that have no food. We are going to make provision. Excuse me. That we must feed people. I believe for about five Sunday, every Sunday, food was available. We asked people to go to the back there, collect food. Like I tell somebody, maybe because we are not doing social media, we are not showing. We can only tell people, why will you video somebody you are feeding? You are showing to the world. Let them just give them, let them go on their own. We don't need to let the one know. who want to believe that you are doing, let it believe, don't want to believe, not believe. You know, for life, even though you show it, there are some people who will not believe you. But why don't you hold on to the God that reward? He said, I reward publicly. I want you to understand that God is a rewarder. It's not by show up. 
We know how many children's school fees is paid for this past 13 years. Hospital be many things that's happened. Many were not sure. How many children they've gone to university, they've come. We we'll celebrate God, power, and His glory. We send at least in this city now, the best sound engineer came from here, the best light people came from here. Most of them were sent to go and train, to go and learn different things, and they are developing their own families, succeeding through here. We celebrate that glory, what God has done. Finally, what are we celebrating today? The fulfillment of promises. That every promise is every word God gave to us. I remember, I came one day and announced to the church, I said, God showed to me that he will give me no tomato estate. I will just start there where I just few, the people, member of the church, I don't think we were up to 30. I don't know that. I said, God said the tomato estate will give it to me. And one of our daughters, I say, hey, Pastor, it's not possible. Those people, they like Manuel Wello and at different, different gates. I said, when the time comes, they will agree and they will sell it for us. Nobody believed. <laughs> but two years later, they came and they said they want to sell the place. And they gave us a price. Again, no money to buy. In fact, the truth that I don't know, if we decided the member then, the member would be one, one million era. We can't go buy the land. There was no money. But I said, God, you spoke, you said you will give me. It, there are many places God said he will give it, he will give me. I will tell you, I've shared with some of us before. The level say we give it to. And I said, God, you say you give me this place, but we don't have the money. And I told the church account, and I said, we are going to empty the account. I will empty my pocket. We are going to sew it out. We give it. Gave the money out. I gave the money out on Friday. On Saturday, I received a call to come and dedicate the office. And I tell the person, <laughs> I can't make it. Maybe by Monday. Oh, he said, no, 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 sir. Can you do it? Because I need to resume work on Monday. He said, the truth is that nobody wants to resume the office until I arrive. And I said, okay, no problem. I will come on Sunday evening after service. And on Sunday evening, I arrived for Thai court, took me to the NDDC office, both the MD, the project director, everybody, and I dedicated it. I prayed for them. I said, okay, you cannot go your seat now and sit down because... They said they are scared of, they told them the past people do a lot of sham in the office. <laughs> and I prayed for them. And I, go, I was coming down, I was going my own. And one of them, the, the project director called me, said, why will you visit me with this kind car? Because I drove Corolla down. He said, no, I'm going to buy you Prado Jeep. I said, okay, I don't need Prado Jeep. Don't worry about yourself. He said, no, 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 no. Even directed me to a place, go there and collect a car. I said, I don't need a car. God told me to buy me land, and I don't have the money for that land. He said, no worry. We will buy the car. We will contribute for the buying of the money. And a few days later, they sent me, that same money, they sent me 15 million era. I said, hear me, I will not buy the car. I will use the money for another thing. I mean, why on Sunday the landlord they were disturbing or we negotiate? I told them weekend, two weekend as far as we have not paid. He called me that Sunday. I said Sunday is a part of weekend. By Monday afternoon, I'm doing tell God don't they disturb me? I'll pay your money. We sell fifty million. He said ah, the money is thirty five. I said take that one first. The Sunday of it, somebody came and said. God said I should give you money. I said, where's the money now? And he gave me 10 million naira. Until the project director was doing Thanksgiving here. The time was going on. Somebody came and he said, as you were talking, God said I should give you 5 million. Another man came. He said, I didn't, he didn't see me. He saw somebody. He said, I want to see the pastor. Said, what happened? He said, I just came to this company. There, this Pedero, they owe me some money. They just pay me my money. And the Lord said I should give the church Five million. And that was the last five million we we're looking for to complete the 35 million. Amen. And that's how 
They didn't pay. There was no fundraising. There was nobody. I believe everybody is here now. But nobody, no fundraising. Nobody put it under pressure. You must give. Because God promised me, and I said, God, we truly provide it. And the truth that God has been so faithful. And I can tell you after that, I've got it to Prado Jeep now. The Prado Jeep I rejected. The same person gave me the first Prado Jeep. Another one gave me the present one I'm using now without that. And before I ride that Prado, uh, Prado Jeep, one day I was driving, I think with my wife, I said, one day, I'm going to have Prado Jeep. I just said it. And I heard my spirit say, it is done. When I gave that private jeep, the first one, I gave it out. I dashed, I, I sold it. I think because the building, somehow we sold it out. We sold it to put the money there. And I went to pray for this honorable man. I said, I finished praying. I was going. He said, ah, Pastor, where's your car? I said, my car is in the workshop. I said, my... This my son just brought me. I said, no, 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 no. We need to do something. I said, don't worry, I have a car. And I left. I received a call. The wife called me and said, my husband said she'll come back and carry the... I said, I'm going somewhere. I will send my one of the protocol to come and do that. And I thought the joke. Behold, the car came. You see, when you serve God from the depth of your heart... You don't need to, like I always tell people, you don't catch your people. Just open your heart. Follow him. If he's your caller, he will provide. But if he don't call you, he will not provide. That's why people lie. That's why people say, God say, give, when God did not say. That's why they spoil the name of Christianity, in the name of giving, because you are not sure if God calls you. If you are sure that God calls you, he will provide all your needs. The Bible says that God will serve in the Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. He will supply your need according to what is riches in, not according to your strength, not according to your grammar, not according to your power, but according to him. I conclude with this. God is promise keeper. He has kept every single promises he gave us at the beginning of this ministry. But there are still many. He promised us to build an hospital, free hospital where people come and deliver, free and go. What are we going to do in this celebration? Three things we'll do today. Profound appreciation to God. Number two, explosive praise and celebration. And number three, fresh surrender and submission to God. I mean, we will dedicate our life to God again for the next one year. An aggressive kingdom service, effort as our art of worship. That means so winning, preaching for souls, preaching for people, going out there at the same time, giving to the needies, giving to those who have nothing to to let on. I believe that's what we're going to do. And I pray that the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Please, shall we rise in our feet as we pray.